Hey everybody, it is me, Margaret, and I'm feeling kind of Halloween-y today as we are at the beginning of October. And I made this little hat from a Snappy Tots pattern, but I ended up changing some things. I couldn't figure out how she did her leaves. My leaves were not coming out right, but as you see on the hands and feet, there are leaves. And so I just kind of made some other leaves and stuck them on here. Her leaves are much cuter, so if you can figure those out, do that with the pattern. Snappy Tots does have some free patterns, but this is a paid for pattern, but she does run a lot of sales. Now in this instance, I paid $8 and then I got eight patterns. But the $8 was really for the packaging of Beanies for Bravery, which is something that she does where you could do some black or brown beanies and send them to her. Uh, I'll, I'll link that below if you're interested in doing that. They end up going to the military. I think it is the Army. Um, but there's a story that's involved there if you're interested in that. But this is one of her Halloween patterns. And then I started another one, but this is Red Heart Super Saver, and sometimes I just get frustrated working with it. But instead of doing the typical front post, back post ribbing that you might see on something like this, this is done with a um, half double crochet in both the front and back loops, which is unusual. I had never done that before, but it does give a ribbing pattern, and it is kind of swooping, as you can see, around there. This is a different type of pumpkin pattern. I'll link that one, too, so you can see what I'm doing. But there was some place over here, yeah, right there, that just went wonky, and I, I didn't like it. Of course, that could be my back. I could just put it in the back. And then it calls for a stem, lots of curly vines on it, and the cute little face. You can also make these into pillows by creating a separate little disc and sewing it onto the bottom. Stuffing it, and then sewing it onto the bottom, of course. But I think her patterns have so much personality, and I really enjoy looking through them. And I bought several other Halloween patterns, too, but... um. This is all I've managed to complete up until this point. Strangely, two of the things that I wanted to talk about today involved knitting, and they became related when I didn't realize it. One of them is that Craftsy is back. Once upon a time, Craftsy sold to Blueprint. I had the full year subscription to Blueprint, and I really enjoyed it. I still do. Then they went belly up, but I, actually they sold back to Craftsy. So now the name Blueprint is gone, but it is now Craftsy again, and it, it works pretty much the same way. Well, I was looking at a class on Fair Isle that I thought was really helpful. I really loved the teacher. Her name was Tannis Gray, or is Tannis Gray, and I am actually working on it right now, working through that class, and I love it. However, a few months back, I pre-ordered a book on Harry Potter knitting. Now, I know there have been lots of patterns out there. You can find some free things on Ravelry that are patterned after what you see on the screen, which is kind of fun. But this was a book, and the, the projects were so pretty. I want to do that book review for you now, but I just noticed as I sat down and pulled the book up that guess who wrote it? Tannis Gray. <laughs> It's the exact person that I've taken this class from on Craftsy, and I love her, and I think she is an awesome designer, too. So I'm going to edit in some pictures here so that you can see what the projects are in this book, because so oftentimes you look at a book that's for sale, say at Amazon or whatever, and you can't see the project. So it's like, oh, I like the topic, and I think I might like it, but I want to see what all the projects are first before I invest in it. So I'm going to show it to you here because you can't see each individual project um, on Amazon if you were going to buy it that way. So come look over my shoulder and let me show you. Now I think you know I can't show you any of the patterns of course. I can only show you what the finished projects look like. So we start here with the pretty cover. Knitting Magic. Harry Potter Knitting Magic. The official Harry Potter knitting book. Here's the key. The lightning bolts will reflect, you know, whether it's beginner or all the way to complex. And I'm going to have to say that the majority of these are intermediate to complex. You'll also notice that you've got different divisions. Crafty Creatures, Wizarding Wardrobe, Inspired imp Apparel, 
and delightful decor. Now the difference between inspired apparel and the Wizarding Wardrobe is that Wizarding Wardrobe is copied after what you see in the movies. And then inspired apparel would be something that you would recognize maybe if you were a Harry Potter fan. So let's start with crafty creatures. And we start here with the Cornish Pixies. Isn't that adorable? And you'll remember that from um, the Chamber of Secrets. And all scattered throughout the book, you'll have these little trivia pages. Behind the magic, it tells you that the Pixies' vibrant blue color in the films was based on Cornish Blue Roosters, Cornish Pottery, and Cornish Blue Cheese. So I love all that little trivia. That's fun. And then there's Fluffy, the three-headed dog. There's the back of him. And look at Hedwig. Now this is an elegant project, I think. Look at the detail. The little talons in the back of him. Her, excuse me, she's a girl. And now we're moving into Wizarding Wardrobe. Now, this is a free pattern on Ravelry, this sweater. However, the free pattern is made more along the lines of the way Mrs. Weasley may have knitted. And that would be no ribbing. She just did a rolled hem. Very simple things. Because remember, she had to crank these things out. Uh, she made one for every child. And she did them every year. And so she did them a lot. So they're a little bit simpler. And I actually did that version, the free version, for Maggie. And it came out great. It's the one and only sweater that I've ever done. So this pattern is a little bit more refined than the free pattern and it does include the charts for all the letters of the alphabet. Now we're moving into the house scarves. So you've got one for every house and also the cardigans. Now this was part of their school uniform and they give you each of the colorways down at the bottom here. They all have the same trim and here's a shot of them wearing them in the movie. Now, I did not remember this scarf at all. This is supposed to be Professor Umbridge, and she had a cat scarf. Luckily, they included this picture of her wearing it right here. I believe that was in Order of the Phoenix. Yeah. But I was so glad they included that picture. And now we're moving into the inspired apparel. And this was not patterned after any of the costumes. And this just has a bunch of symbols that you would recognize from the Harry Potter books, like the Sorting Hat, the Golden Snitch, Cats, the Goblet of Fire, Harry's Glasses, Cauldrons, and on the sleeves, can you see the little lightning bolts? Now this is called um, the Mirror of Irised Cowl. And I wouldn't have, ch I, I was not that detail oriented to notice this. Look at the pretty patterning that you have here and the cables. Now notice the mirror from the movie. You see the patterning down the side of the mirror? Here's a better shot of the whole mirror. And right in this little portion, you can see that cabling. And now we got some mittens and socks that have the golden snitch on them. This is the transportation scarf, and it has the night bus, the brooms, and platform nine and three quarters represented on that. Now, I never would have noticed this, but do you see this pattern? This is called the dueling gloves, and let me show you in the movie. The table where they did the dueling club had this pattern on it with the different phases of the moon. I, I never noticed that, but there it is in the gloves. And these are supposed to be Quidditch socks. You notice that they had this um, checkerboard pattern on the Quidditch pitch. So you can have all of those in the different colors to represent your team. Now this is the Owl Post sweater. I don't recognize this cabling anywhere in the Owl Post, but look, you have a little hidden message here. So this is kind of like representing Harry Potter without being too outward about it. And I thought that was kind of cool for grown-ups. And look at the, the cuff here on the sleeve. It looks like an owl. And those mitts are beautiful. The Patronus mitts. Very elegant. You see Expecto Patronum on the, uh, on the, the gloves themselves. And I love this. This is called the Buckbeak Sweater. And there's Buckbeak, and you can see how his feathers 
do which inspired the designing of this sweater but let's look back at the shape of it I love the bell sleeves the fact that they're three-quarter length or bracelet length as they say today I like the wider hem on there I just think it's a really elegant sweater now this was inspired by the Beau Baton's uniform in the Goblet of Fire and there is a picture now of course it's not knitwear so it wasn't considered part of the wardrobe this is inspired but there it is it's a pretty little capelet and this is the chamber of secrets beanie it's patterned after oh that's the pretty top it's patterned after the door the opening the entry to the chamber of secrets and this is called hermione's time turner sweater now she didn't wear it, but she had a time turner, which allowed her to take lots of classes on one term. She was very studious. And to me, it looks like the time turner is on one side and then there's like magic um, sort of, so, I mean, you could see where that might be traveling through time, the way that's designed. Now this is the dark mark sweater. Now the thing that's so great about this is the pattern is hidden. You can only see it at certain angles when the light hits it at certain angles and it's achieved simply by knits and pearls can you see the angle when you're shooting at a different angle you can see the dark mark right there it also has the magic words more to, I can't remember what the magic words are but that that call the dark mark up you have to hold it at a certain angle in order to see what it says so it's kind of secret now this is a lariat, a Nagini lariat it's called, and Nagini was that bad snake. This would be a great Halloween thing to wear around, even if you weren't dressing up like anything, just to wear a snake around your neck. And this is Luna Lovegood's Spectrospec gloves. And you can see those silly glasses that she wore right there and sticking out of the pocket. And Luna was so unique that obviously you have to have two gloves that are not exactly the same because that was very much Luna's personality. Now this pretty shawl is called the Deathly Hallows shawl and let me show you why. You remember that this is the Deathly Hallows symbol and the triangle, the circle, and that, that line down the middle each represents three different things and they're worked into the shawl. The triangle and the circle are represented by some lace work and then right down the middle you can see the wand, the, the, the straight line that forms that. But I thought that was pretty. Now we're moving into delightful decor. And the first thing you have are mug cozies or what they're calling that in the house colors, simple. And this is what we say in the south we call this a mobile because we know that there's a city in Alabama called Mobile so we just never have called this a mobile but whatever here you go and you have the house there's the sorting hat right here and each of the houses mascots is represented and of course you don't have to make this as a mobile you can instead just use these as little amigurumi and now you're going to have the seven horcrux dishcloths or washcloths or whatever. And each one of those seven items are represented in cloth. And that's achieved again by knits and pearls. So that would be considered a beginner project. And I love this one. Okay, it's just a throw, or you see it here as a throw, but look at it it's called the order of the phoenix throw and it's incredibly intricate and i love the fact that it's round so pretty so that's all the projects that are in that book and i absolutely love it i don't think i have the skill set to do half of what's in here but it doesn't stop me from perusing the book and reading through the patterns and I don't know. I guess that's a true lover of knit to be able to just read a pattern book. <laughs> I don't know. But I wanted you to see that in case that would be something that would interest you. And uh, you'll know ahead of time whether or not that's something you want for your library. So I'm sitting outside editing and I realize I had to re-record something that I recorded earlier. It is the fall and we are normally helping Sister Margaret Mary with her music program fundraisers. Sister is a longtime member of the Sheepishly Sharing community. She is a 
visually challenged. Um, she's uh, legally blind, but she is such a go-getter and unfortunately she has bad things going on in 2020 more than the rest of us. She's been diagnosed with stage four uterine cancer. So she's left the convent and she's living in Louisville, Kentucky, where she's right there by her treatments, conveniently located. And that means that she's also living on disability. Now she's supplementing that disability payment with um, craft sales. And so I was talking to her on the phone this morning and we thought, well, since people are usually very willing to help her for her craft fair and her music fundraising, maybe they would want to do um, some something to help her here and she could really use some craft supplies uh, for her crafts that she makes. So down in the description box below I have a link that will take you to a page of my blog that will explain a little bit more and give you her wish list and there's nothing on there that's too great or expensive. Um, super saver yarn and things like that are the types of supplies that she she uses. She will also welcome any crafts that are completed. Things that will sell, not hats because we've learned over the years that they don't sell very well to her um, well to the people who buy her things. So um, especially if you have things that are non-yarn related, uh, that would be great, but her address is in the description box below. Oh, and I did send her some hats for the chemo situation. She is going to lose her hair on that, but she doesn't need any more, so don't send those. But she would like some cards, I bet. She didn't mention that, but her mailing address is on that post that you can find um, linked below. So if you if you feel so inclined, I'm just putting that information out there. Now last vlog I was working on this shawl right here and I'll put the link in the description box below. I actually had to fold it over because I don't have a space that's long enough. So I hope that little swoop up there is going to block correctly. I don't know. I might be able to steam it properly when it's finished. But I really love the way it came out. So it's still pretty wet. but. Let me see if you can see how the colors, I hope they're coming out pretty. It's a bunch of, it's natural type colors. You have grays, some sort of purples, maybe some tans, kind of taupey overall, but I just really love it. And I haven't officially sewn all my ends in because I learned that from my knitting guru, Erin, who points out that when you block things, you could actually cause puckering and stuff like that if you do sew it in ahead of time. Now, of course, there, maybe there's a technique that we don't know about or something like that, but this is the way she taught me to do it, and I see value in it, so that's the way I do it. But I really, really love the way it came out. Now, I'm in one of those phases right now where I have way more projects that I want to do than I have time for. And one of the things that I stumbled upon, I can't remember if I showed this to you before or not, but this is a free pattern from Plymouth Yarn. And do you see how it looks like a shawl there, but it looks like a cowl there? I like the fact that it's stretchy and big enough to be pulled around your shoulders and to use as a shawl. I tend to have a problem regulating my body temperature. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm either burning hot, freezing cold, somewhere in between. So you'll always find me, even in the summertime, carrying around a sweater when we're going to be indoors someplace because oftentimes the air conditioner is just too cold for me, depending on where you go, especially like the movies. I always freeze in the movies. But gosh, it's been a long time since I've been in the movies with the virus and all but but anyway you know what am I talking what I'm talking about and then the same thing is true in the winter time you might go and somebody has their heat turned up so high you're burning hot <laughs> so you need to be able to take off a layer so um, this particularly appeals to me um, I also like the fact that it's kind of a in between like a good thing for fall because it's not overly warm like a big heavy sweater and of course being easy to take off as a layer. So I'm really looking into that. It looks like it's probably made of a bulky yarn. I do not know what Plymouth Yarn Viento is. I have to look that up first of all. Uh, but you do knit this on size 11 needles and generally speaking I'm not huge. I don't like to work with bulky yarn when I knit because generally it hurts my hands. So uh, 
I don't know though, I'll be willing to try again. And I'm definitely in a real knitting phase. However, I am so fond of crochet. Crochet, like I said before, it's like coming home to me when I pick up a crochet hook. It's very, it's very soothing and it, you know, it's easier for me than knitting is. So I like to come back to it because that's what I learned first. But I love these Snappy Tots patterns with all the personality in them. So I've been doing these just for fun. And besides, I think I can, when I give these away, this could bring some, some smiles to some people too because they're so cute. Now, I recently put up a I thought very interesting video about pre-treating cottons to keep them from running and blah 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 blah. We had a lot of discussion on that video and it was pretty well the consensus that Hobby Lobby I Love This Cotton is an awesome cotton. It is inexpensive as well. Now it's a little bit more expensive than the peaches and cream which is what this was and we do know that the dyeing process, the manufacturing process of the dye is where all the co color setting and everything needs to take place in order for it to be set for it to be a good dye job, so to speak. And this does not do it. Peaches and Cream is notorious for not having the colors set. And for the most part, it's fine. Like Tucker says, who cares if your dishcloth fades? And I agree, I, I could not care less if it, if it fades. I don't want it bleeding on other things, of course, but if you want to learn more about what my results were soaking it in salt, Epsom salt, and vinegar, then I'll put the link in the description box below. But we had a big discussion in the description, I mean in the comment section about what is good inexpensive cottons. And I agree that I love this cotton from Hobby Lobby is an awesome one. And just to show you, here it is being washed. This is what it looks like when it's been washed with bleach. I had just washed a load of kitchen towels and I didn't want to wait to accumulate more. So, so I found it hard to find things that I could bleach so I could test these little boogers right here. These are some little mats that we have. They're made of acrylic on the top, so they should handle the bleach fine. And the rest of the stuff, it doesn't matter. They're car washing towels or dog washing towels or things like that. So it doesn't matter if they get red on them or if they get bleached. So we'll, we'll test it out. So in here I have detergent and then bleach in the liquid bleach dispenser. And then I always set it to whitest whites because that gives me a double rinse. Whenever you use chlorine bleach, whitest whites will give you a second rinse. I add a little extra time just because I want to make sure everything's nice and clean. It will be a hot wash. So that bleached pretty well. I can't wait to try it out against the untouched one. That one does look a little bit faded, but here we go. Doesn't the white things in here don't seem to worse the wear. So that was good. This is a hundred percent cotton too. It's a placemat and you can see it handles the bleach very well as well too so that's great and look how good it is compared to its original color this was also bought at Hobby Lobby. It was called Crafter Secret Cotton and it was more inexpensive. Uh, this does have more and it's $3.79. Let's see if it tells us on here. It's two ounces, 57 grams, 95 yards, 86 meters. And then here you've got 3.5 ounces, 100 grams. 190 yards and 165 meters. So this is considerably more and quite frankly it feels better. This has a feel that is a little bit closer to what you'll get in a peaches and cream. It's very similar though, very similar. But the dyes held better. Here is an example of when it's washed with bleach and you can see that it did lighten up but the colors are considerably better than bleach with the peaches and cream and here's the original untouched version right there. 
So I'll have to say that definitely what you buy at Hobby Lobby is better as far as the dye job goes. Now the quality of the yarn I think is very similar to this. It's tough. It's a good workhorse yarn and I do like that. This however is softer and now you could actually make garments out of this I think and it would be uh, wearable and comfortable. So and I'm, I'm not the only person saying that. I think this is the general consensus uh, for most of the people who commented below. Note that Knit Picks Dishy Cotton was also mentioned a lot as a favorite and Lauren points out that her mom says they bleach beautifully as well. Now Lauren sells her work and she doesn't recommend that to her customers and she shouldn't. Since bleaching colored cottons is a gamble, you'll never see it recommended on washing instructions. So um, good to know. However, what I did do is I made a whole bunch and I thought maybe I would go through the same process just to see how they turn out. But seeing how well these did, I'm not so sure I'm going to go to all that trouble. If they can take the bleach, then I think they probably don't even need to be pre-treated in any way to do the other. So I probably won't even continue that, that test. So there you go. And speaking of Hobby Lobby, before you jump down in the comments and tell me not to shop there because you don't like their politics, let me just say this. I try to keep my shopping and my politics completely separate. This is America and everybody is entitled to his or her own opinion. And quite frankly, I have no idea what other stores' politics are. <laughs> For example, I go to the cleaners, I go to a vet, I um, have doctors, I deal at the grocery store and Walmart and all these different places and I, I don't know what their specific politics are. And so and it doesn't matter because I respect the fact that everybody has the right to believe the way they want to. So you can lecture me all you want to in the description box but remember this is America and everybody is entitled to their own opinion. And if you don't agree with my opinion on different things, it's okay. Can't we still be friends? I mean, I don't understand why we got to be all at everybody. That's just not necessary. So, you know, for example, I have plenty of friends who don't share the same politics that I do, and I'm not going to write them off because we don't see eye to eye on that. And not to mention the fact that I have plenty of friends of different religions, but that doesn't affect my relationship with that person. So, yes, I will shop at Hobby Lobby, or yes, I will shop at Walmart, or whatever, and I don't care what the politics is. So, that's my stance on that. <laughs>